So um, jumping into this, guys, we're going to uh, start off with developing the base. OK, so thinking methodically, I kind of did that sketch. And I walked through the fact that I'm going to start with the curve at the underside of the surface. Then I'm going to do my the, the, um, the guard rails on the side. Then I'm going to do the armature for the roof. And I'll just kind of work my way through these different bits and pieces. So first off, let's start with the actual arc that we're going to develop this with. Um, so in Grasshopper, you can start in one of these, um, like the front or right side views, but I'm going to quickly skew that so that it's not along the X or Y or Z plane specifically. Um, so you can just start here, and uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'll, whoa, Photoshop, what? I, I didn't do that. Anyway, um, so I think I'm actually going to build it with points in case I want to change it to a point-based thing later. So I'm just going to drop a point in space somewhere. And the reason I'm dropping it in space somewhere is so that you don't get fixated on uh, the, the world um, coordinate plane or the world origin. Okay, so I'm doing that very consciously. Because when you're developing these kinds of models, you're going to have a site file, and your site file is not going to put your building at exactly the zero, zero point. So from there, I'm going to copy this. So I'll just hit Alt, and I'll probably extend it. Let's start with something like 50 feet. Yep. And then I'll, I'll grab that left side point again, and I'm going to, um, well, yeah, let's just do the two anchor points. Let's start from there. Um, yeah, no, sorry. Yeah, I think we're going to do it based off of points rather than the curve. But you, you can simulate the curve a number of different ways. But anyway, those are going to be my... Um, I keep changing my mind. I want to do three points. Sorry. So do um, use Alt and uh, make another one that's exactly in the middle, 25 feet over. And then I'm going to uh, grab this point, and I'm just going to move it up five feet. So it's a pretty low curve. Yeah. So then um, I'm just going to very um, easily go into um, curve tools. I don't use these curve tools very frequently. Let's do arc. Center of arc. Let's do, oh, there it is. Um, let's do a three-point arc. That's this one right here. And then you can just go from point to point. Whoops, I keep doing that backwards. Go from uh, end point to end point, and then select your center point like that. Yes? How hard did you raise it up? Five feet. But if it counts for anything, the height really isn't all that critical, because we're going to be able to bend it and stuff later. Okay, so um, get Grasshopper started, um, and we're going to work here on this curve. I'm just going to work on everything in perspective from this point on. So um, there are a few things that you probably need to know when you start to develop referential geometry, right? Um, we're, we're now we're starting to simulate the idea that we're building in an environment that's sort of somewhere else in space. So I'm going to grab this whole thing and skew it off, uh, off axis a little bit so that we give ourselves a proper challenge, right? So your, your curve should not be aligned with this axis at all, okay? It should be, it should be off axis. That's very, very important. Um, <clears throat> so after that, I can just reference in the curve and then start to work from that. So I'm going to go to Grasshopper, reference in curve, say set one curve, and place it here. <clears throat> All right, so um, from here, I have my referential curve. Now I want to develop my referential platform, right? That's going to be essentially, think of it as like the walking surface, right? And then everything from there is going to be built as a positive, negative, or extrusion, or some kind of, um, you know, development off of that surface. So from here, we need to extrude it along its own surface normal, right? Uh, the extrusion for this needs a direction. And in order for us to develop that direction, what I'm going to do is take the curve, like 
like this, and I'm going to pretend that it's a surface, and then I'm going to find the center point and then extrude it along the surface normal. Does that make sense? So, so that's why I had you skew it, is because that's actually kind of a challenge to find that. But remember that um, if you're going to work with a surface normal, the tools you're going to need are all under the surface analysis menu. Do you guys remember which ones those are? To find a surface normal? That's all right. Maybe I'll do a quiz on just this. No, nope, it's not the Trinity. All right, so uh, we've got evaluate surface. You guys remember that one? Yeah. yeah. And surface closest point. So I'm going to drop evaluate surface in. See how that has a normal? But that's going to ask for the UV points on the surface. That's this one, surface closest point. And then um, we also need to give it a point to reference. So um, we're going to find the centroid of that imaginary surface, right? So that's going to be here. But the trouble is, you know, before we even get to all this, I don't have a surface to reference or to find a centroid for. So I need to create a surface. So how do you think we could create a surface off of this? What would you do if you were modeling it in Rhino? Draw a line right here. Yeah, draw a line across the bottom two points and then create a surface with that. We don't really have a, a planar surface command, so we would use loft or ruled surface. <laughs> no, no extra credit. But I said loft, you know? One of these is that actually is a very astute observation. Nicely done. <laughs> okay, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, reference those two points and then we're going to create the line and then use those two lines. Um, the line command is right here. And we're going to go back to params, and I'm going to grab two point params. Don't worry, I'm going to stop in a moment to give you guys time to catch up. But we've got point param here, point param there. And you just need to set one point, select this one, set one point, select that one, and then plug them in. Whoops. Ah. Why does it keep that one active? This one won't let me undo. That's weird. Um, so plug those both in. You get those two surfaces, and then you can either um, you could either loft or use ruled surface. I will say this though, and you're probably not going to remember it now. Some of you might. Some of you will have to be reminded a few times. Um, but if you have two separate references rather than a list of two in the same uh, in the same tree branch, then you probably want to use ruled surface rather than loft, if that makes any sense. Think of it this way. If you go to surf and freeform and you look at loft, it's asking you for a single input for curves. So you want those to be packaged together when you feed it in. Ruled surface, on the other hand, uh, on the other hand is going to ask for your first curve and your second curve, and it's going to create the surface with them or your first set of curves and your second set of curves. Does that make a little bit of sense? Well, that's all right. Wait, what? Why is it doing that? All right, I might need to save and close this uh, down and reopen it. Because I'm getting uh, command locked for some reason. Yes. All right, so anyway, guys, I want you to get to this point. Um, you don't need loft. I can't even delete it. I need to save the file. Hang on. Uh, 